Hello, hi, it's Bernice here. Welcome to another episode of Honey and Milk Podcast. Um, this is our first YouTube video. Uh, to those that have been following me through my podcast, that's the audio podcast alone. Welcome back. It's so nice to see you. And I can actually say so nice to see you because now I get to see you guys. Actually, you get to see me, but I believe, yeah, we can see each other. <laughs> So yeah, this is the first video episode of Honey and Milk, and if you're a first time here, welcome. Feel free to go to the other previous episodes, although they're only audio, but they're still just as interesting as, hopefully, I think they are. Yeah, so welcome to Honey and Milk, and get seated, get comfortable, because today we're talking about guarding our hearts. So there's the scripture, sorry, I'm going to be looking at my book. <laughs> so that's the difference between um, audio and video podcasting is that, yeah, video, everything is seen. So even if I'm reading from a book, like my journal or anything, um, it'll be obvious. So I don't say these things off head or off hand. And yeah, it's still the same. The same content, but different presentation. Right, so guarding our hearts. In Proverbs 4 verse 23, it says, Guard your hearts with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. And when it comes to our hearts, our heart tends to relate to our passions. So our mind is relating to our thoughts, while our heart relates to our passions. And when it comes to passion, for instance, in um, Acts chapter 1 verse 3, KJV version, as King James Version, uh, the passion of Christ is likened to the suffering of Christ. And then in John 3, 16 to 17, we see that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, for the son did not come to the world to condemn, rather, but to save the world. So in that verse, we see that the passion of Christ, or rather the suffering that Christ went through, was an expression of his love to us. So in order for us to love, we need our heart our heart is one of the major organs of our love and our our ability to love something is also our ability to be passionate for that for that object the object or the person of our love and um also the two commandments or rather the the two commandments that jesus used to sum up the entire law that is love the lord your god with all your so with all your heart actually with all your heart with all your mind and with all your soul with all your soul and with all your strength so it differs depending on which version you read it from but the heart is there the soul is there strength is there and mind is there so we see that not only are we to fix our thoughts on jesus christ but we are also to fix our hearts on him in order to fully love him in the in the way that he has commanded us to and even in the second commandments we see that he tells us okay love your neighbor as yourself so there is an aspect of love to our neighbors as to others and an aspect of love to ourselves but for us to be able to love in its entirety in its fullness we also not only do we need to choose to love someone but we also need to want that's the desire our desires our passions for a person should also enable our love for the object of our love right so then we come again to proverbs 4 verse 23 and philippians 4 verse 7 and our hearts are likened to entry or exit ways because proverbs 4 verse 23 says for out of it so that means our hearts do have exit ways that means there is there is well people call it gates but there is is not specifically written in the scripture that it is gates. But basically, when they say guard your heart, it's mostly um, gates or doors or I don't think there's any window that's guarded <laughs> except with a metal rail. Yeah, so that could be a sort of guarding. Um, but when it comes to actively guarding, like not passive guards, but actually active guards, most times it's at gates. Sorry, and it's, it's at gates and it's at doorways. So our hearts are likened to gates and they are likened to doors. 
that means things can come out of it and things can come into it as well so we're called to guard our hearts and that's kind of a bit vague seeing that our hearts are well the physical heart is already guarded by a rib cage and the our spiritual heart is kind of invisible so how do we go about guarding our hearts when we search through the scripture we see that the bible points to two major guards that should keep our hearts or rather that should guard our hearts so we have two major bodyguards that are meant to guard our hearts the first one is the peace of god and the second one is actually ourselves like in proverbs 4 verse 23 it says keep your hearts or guard your hearts and it's speaking to us to guard our hearts but in philippians 4 verse 7 it speaks about the peace of god keeping or guarding our hearts so that means there are two guards two bodyguards the peace of god and us ourselves but then how do we come in contact with okay how do we utilize the peace of god and how do we how do we ourselves like how is it possible to guard our hearts and what should we do because sometimes it's a bit confusing <laughs> so the when it comes to the first guard so the first guard being the peace of god right in second thessalonians 3 verse 16 it shows that it is the presence and the gift of god that births this peace so it is the lord of peace being with you and it is also the lord of peace giving to you peace in every way at all times so in order for us to gain access or activate this guard the the first guard of our hearts the first bodyguards of our bodyguard of our hearts which is the peace of god it is it is found and it is activate, activated in our relationship with god and it is when we continually relate to him when we continually stay in his presence when we ask of him and pray to him asking him for the gift of peace um, that only he can give he says i will not give you peace like the world gives i will give you you know the real true peace <laughs> right so that and it also tells us to cast all our anxieties and our burdens to god so it is in our relating to god the lord of peace that we are able to cast away our anxieties our worries the things that will try their best to either distract us or disrupt our peace with god our fellowship with god because it is in the presence of god that we feel the peace of god so there will be things that will try to distract you or disrupt that fellowship with god that allows you to also intake his peace um as well as his presence so it is when we go to him and we cast off our anxieties, cast off our worries. Okay, like you're worried that your rent is due, you don't have the money for it. Then it is when you go to his presence and you tell him honestly, like, okay, this is what is worrying me. But you've already said in your word that, you know, the birds, they do not plant, but yet they are fed. So I trust in you. And it's in that place. See, so like it's a... It's, already related because you go there with your problems and then he reminds you of his word and he assures you of it and in his presence you're able to give off your worries without without burying it in so it's it's also unhealthy to just think that oh i'm not going to focus on the worry but you're not actually giving up the worry it's just there and it's festering and it is actually still distracting you because it will still come up again so it is better to openly tell God, this is what I'm worried about. This is what I'm anxious about. And allow him to reassure you and give you his peace. So the first and I would say even very, very important bodyguard of our heart is the peace of God. It is found in the presence of God. It is found in the relation, in our relationship with God. It is also a gift of God for it's the Lord of peace that will give unto us in every way at all times his peace so then we go to the second bodyguard of our hearts which is us ourselves how do we um how are we able to actively guard our hearts by our, like ourselves 
So just as I talked about how the heart is an exit and an entry way, it means that you, if the Bible says out of it flows the issues of life, then that means you kind of want to be moving according to the issues of life you want to harvest, right? So it's, um, so it's like the things that you know will negatively affect the issues of life or your life as is. If you know that you want to be someone bolder, if you w know that um, you want to walk in purity, you want to walk in holiness, then there are some things that you're going to have to ban away from your heart. And that means um, not allowing it to take your attention. Um, I think the best rule would be like the things that will that in their presence that if you're continuously open to it if you're continuously exposing yourself to it it will cause you to normalize or accept or even become affectionate for these things that would then affect the, your life so one of the things that really helped me so um i used to watch horror movies i used to love horror movies actually and so I was actually quite affectionate to horror movies, but I did not know that it was making me to normalize fear. It was making me to normalize being afraid or when I hear something in the night, my mind starts racing to somewhere else. And it slowly made me to start feeling like it was normal to feel this sort of things because I kept on watching people that their normal reaction to such things would be fear. You know, trying to run away, seeing all this thing, and then seeing this the stuff they're running away from, catching them, and then also inducing more fear. So, yeah, I had to stay away from that. <laughs> so, if you want to be bold, if you want to be unafraid, if you want to be, um, you know, stronger and all that, then you're gonna have to expose yourself to things that will positively affect what you want your life to become and seeing that our lives should em emulate christ's life and should take on the fullness of christ that means we should be walking towards um boldness we should be walking towards purity we should be walking towards love we should be walking towards the things of god for instance now if you want to walk in purity if you want to walk in holiness then you cannot be around pornographic things you should not be around such things because then it allows your heart to become affectionate or to normalize some things that are not meant to be normalized and you should be up and aware and on guard regarding those things and before you know it because of the exposure to these um lustful things to these pornographic things then over time you're going to start thinking oh but it's just a little this or it's just a little that and then it brings in compromise so that's also another very dangerous thing that would creep its way into our hearts that is very dangerous for us which is compromise so but it's also the same thing with so both negative like ne negatively affecting if, if sorry both negative effects and positive effect, effect effects are the things that you need to look as when it comes to your life if you want if you think whatever you're going to do so the things that we do the things that we see the things that we hear obviously stuff like gossip if you're always around people that gossip a lot you will start to normalize gossip and before you know it you're you start gossiping and then to you it's like oh what's the big deal you know everybody everybody does it then you start saying stuff like that <laughs> so um things that could positively improve or help our sorry or help our lives is um keeping good and godly company so um i've actually forgotten the exact verse it says um bad company corrupts good character that is because by the time you're in people in bad company and they keep doing this thing that keep you keep being exposed to such um unholy things and to such negative things before you know you start normalizing it you start compromising on it and then it's like a decline from there <laughs> so keeping good company keeping godly company that really helps and practicing gratitude in order to counter blessings you know name them one by one 
and reading encouraging books watching encouraging movies there are a lot of good um, let me not say a lot i don't know the number but there is a number of movies you can go through before you reach the end and these movies are not too bad you know they're good they're encouraging and praise and worship going to church fellowshipping with great people and enjoying life and when i mean enjoying life you can christianity is not to make you think that life is boring life is very interesting in the in in, in being a christian you don't have to lock yourself in your room no <laughs> so find ways to enjoy life that are edifying that build you up that encourage you that you know promote promote the life that you want to have or you desire to have or you wish to have especially if you're following the mindset of christ especially if you're trying to follow the life of christ you have to open yourself to the things of god that will cause your hearts to become more affectionate for the things that he also desires so you're really not going to have to go far without you opening your bible because the bible is the sure word of god if you want to know the will of god if you want to know his heart's desire if you want to know his plans then the word of god <laughs> go and read your bible <laughs> but yeah so that's what i'll talk about today regarding guarding your heart regarding um yeah regarding guarding your heart regarding putting things in um alignment to god's plan for you allowing the peace of god to guard your heart and you also being able to diligently guard your heart yeah so um that is the end of today's episode thanks <laughs> so i'm guessing from the very beginning if you hadn't understood because i would still be uploading this as audio as well as video podcast so today as the 10th episode of honey and milk we will start being on youtube i don't know if that's the correct language but basically we would also have videos uploaded on youtube and you guys can also have the video to the audio and um yeah this is the beginning i don't really have much to work with but i know we'll grow together from here and yeah thank you so much uh also another announcement we are now also on audio mac yeah audio mac i will also be posting it on instagram and feel free to share feel free to like the video feel free to comment uh feel free to subscribe <laughs> So the handle, the YouTube handle is still Honey and Milk Podcast. You should be able to see it if you just Google it. And um, yeah, I'll also share the link. So before we go, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, you brought them here for a reason. You brought them to this moment in time to hear what you have kept for them, O oh Lord. Lord, I ask that your peace guard their hearts i ask that you help them and teach them how to diligently guard their hearts i ask that you purify them and you give them a pure spirit and clean hearts O oh lord that they will learn and they will become affectionate for the things that you are affectionate for O oh lord thank you heavenly father because you you hear your children you hear those who call out to you we praise your holy name we adore you. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright guys. Take care. And bye.